There's a question people sometimes ask, and they ask it whenever they're really frustrated and overwhelmed, whenever something really tragic has happened. The question is, if God is all loving, why did this thing happen? And again, it's a question that's often asked whenever something tragic has happened, like the unexpected loss of a loved one, or the loss of their someone's home uh, through a tornado or something like that, or, or when a mass shooting happens in a school and 10 or 12 children are shot. If God's all loving, why did it happen? I wanna talk about this question today. And as I do, I want you to subscribe to this channel and to click that bell so you're notified of future videos. You know, behind the question, if God is all loving, why did it happen, is a certain kind of belief about God, that God who's all powerful can do anything, and that God will somehow change things, change even the laws of physics to enable things to happen for good. And I think that's a really interesting perspective and a common belief about God, but I don't think it's a right belief. I don't think it works that way. And I think we have lots of examples to show that it doesn't work. Bad things happen in life. Bad things happen all the time. I think if we look a little closer, well, for me, it's looking closer at the Judeo-Christian tradition, my tradition, then I have a different understanding of this balance of good and bad in life. It's not dependent on whether God is all loving or whether God should change things for us, but it's about how life is designed. As a follower of the teachings of Jesus, I look to what Jesus said about this, and what I see is that Jesus was very clear that the sun rises on people who do good and people who don't do so good and that rain falls on people who live in ways that are just, as well as on people who live in ways that are unjust. In other words, everyone has happiness and goodness in life, and everyone has tragedy and difficult times to deal with. It doesn't matter whether you're good or not good, or you do the things you should or shouldn't, and after all, all of us have aspects of us that are good, and there are ways that we don't do the good that we should. And out of that, there's a balance. There is both happiness and tragedy in life. It's part of the design. And we understand that part of the design going back into the Hebrew tradition. In the Hebrew scriptures, we see this kind of, of design that, that there's both good and bad in life, and that's really encapsulated in the story of Job from the Hebrew scriptures. Now, here's some things to remember about the story of Job. Job isn't a real person. He never existed. And in fact, the story of Job predates the Hebrew scriptures. It's found in Babylonian writings. So it's, it's a very ancient story, but it's a good story. And it's such a good story that it was included in the Hebrew scripture, just as other things in the Hebrew scriptures were taken from Egypt and Babylon and from Persia. So these different sources came together in what we know today as the Hebrew scripture. But the story of Job, Job is, to take a long story and make it short, Job was a very lucky man. He had everything going for him. He had good health. He had lots of money. He owned lots of land, and he had a big, healthy, happy family. And then it was all taken away from him. He lost his money. He lost his land. He lost his family, and he lost his health. And all of his friends said, you know, Job, you must have done something to deserve this. So just curse God and die. It's not worth it. And Job said, no, I'm still going to be faithful. No matter what happens, I'm still going to be faithful. But in his desperation, he says to God, I don't understand why this is happening. How could this you allow this to happen to me? And God responds at length. And again, I'm going to summarize. And God's response to Job is, look around at everything. Look at nature. Look at the sunrise and the stars and the moon and the seasons 
and, and how crops grow and flowers and so much in the world. This is how things are designed. And further, do you think you could have done better? Do you think you could have done better than the seasons changing and, and there being cycles of birth and life and death and rebirth? And Job is silent. He doesn't know what to say. And I think for us, we need to, to get the sense of this bigger picture that there is a cycle in life and there is goodness and there's happiness and there's pain and there's tragedy. Now, one of the things that people don't ask is what human responsibility is when tragedy happens. We seem to miss that entirely and blame God on it and say, you know, if God's all good, then this shouldn't have happened. Well, wait a second here. In 1992, I moved to South Florida and a few months later, Hurricane Andrew blew in and it caused extensive devastation. Where I lived, we were hit, but I was okay. So I, I called a friend of mine who was pastor of a church there and said, is there a way that I can help? Because I can't do my work, so I'm just sitting here and I have phone, but I don't have power. Can I assist you in some way? And so I went and got involved with the church, providing some assistance to people as best we could. And that Sunday I was in service with, with that congregation and my friend preached an interesting sermon in which he said, you know, all week I've heard people ask the question, why did this happen? Why did a tree fall on my house? Why was my car swept away? Why was this? Why was that? And he said, the one question I never heard was, why have we all chosen to live in Hurricane Alley? And he was right. Hurricanes for hundreds of years have come through from Africa across the Atlantic into the Gulf of Mexico and caused extensive devastation. And when it happens, we ask why God, but we don't ask why we're living there. The same is true for tornadoes and other natural disasters. And in this time of wildfires that have swept the West, we've not asked, why is it that we've allowed the climate to change to the degree that it has so that wildfires and tornadoes are more prevalent? We ask, why, God, are children being shot in schools rather than asking our politicians and holding them accountable to do something? There are many things that happen in life that bring tragedy that are the result of human choices. There's a war in Ukraine, there was a war in Syria, there are wars throughout the world that are causing people to be victimized because of other folks, a minority of people looking for political gain or economic gain. And so there's where the accountability belongs. And we don't take those questions into account, but we often blame God. I think the lesson that we need to remember is, again, from the Hebrew scripture about the role of God in life. And it's captured in the Hebrew name for God, Emmanuel, or as we commonly say, Emmanuel. That name connotes that God is with us, that God is with us in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. No matter what happens in life, the divine presence is in us and I believe within us and around us. And it's there to help sustain us and give us hope and give us courage and vision and to lead us to a faith in goodness, as well as to strengthen us, to hold each other accountable, to do good in the world. So yes, I want to affirm that God is all loving and that we also have responsibility and that a right faith is a belief in God's presence to sustain us, to give us hope and to enliven us, no matter what events happen in life. Thanks for your time today. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, share it with someone who needs to hear this, and leave me some comments. I always look forward to hearing from you.
Have a great day.